Now, the verse I want to deal with today, we find in the book of John. It's called an explanation of John 20 and verse 28. John 20, 28. Let me read the verse for you in the King James Version of our Bible. He says, And Thomas answered and said to him, My Lord and my God. Now this is one of the most common verses and one of the most widely used verses, a bottom line verse that people use to prove that, that Thomas is calling Jesus my Lord and my God. And therefore Jesus must be God because Thomas called him God. But if we do a thorough examination and look, really look into the heart of this verse and, and get a comprehension of what he is talking about, we can readily understand that Thomas is not calling Jesus my God and that Thomas has no intention of worshiping Jesus as God or a God. We find that this verse has been misconstrued by those that have an intent to prove Jesus is something other than what God proclaimed him to be. Jesus, as you know the story, upon being raised from the dead, and the, the, uh, shows himself to some of the brethren, but not to all of them. And the brethren uh, then gather together in this upper room, locking all the doors and, and, uh, uh, because they're afraid of the Romans. And that uh, they, they tell Thomas that uh, Jesus uh, is risen. And Thomas says, no, I don't believe that except I put my finger in the holes in his hands and I thrust my hand into his side. I will not believe. Well, then Jesus shows up and he says, Thomas, reach forth your finger. Uh, put forth your hand. And when Thomas uh, goes to do that, Thomas seeing and believing that, they, that he's standing before Jesus is so awestruck that he proclaims, my Lord and my God, according to the King James Version. Now, what I want you to understand, and those that know their, their, their Greek language, their ancient Koine Greek, they know what I, what I am saying. If, if they've studied their language, this language in any depth. What, what Thomas is proclaiming here is not that, that Jesus is my Lord and my God, because Thomas is a Jew. Thomas believes the prophets and, the, and believes in the law. He and all the brethren that are with him. Thomas doesn't believe that any man is God. Thomas doesn't believe that God came down and became a man. He, he believes what, what Moses proclaimed. Hear, O Israel, the Lord thy God is one. And Thomas believes what Jesus preached, that I am the Son of God. And therefore, why would Thomas proclaim Jesus to be my Lord and my God when Thomas already has a God, and that God is the eternal, invisible God? And in Thomas's mind, this would not have changed. So what is Thomas saying here? Well, what we have here with this terminology, my Lord and my God, is what is known as an idiom. It is a, a saying that is made up of several words that these words together mean something more than what the words would mean individually. And, and the order of the words and the way the words are presented, it's called an idiom. Let me give you a couple of examples. When John was baptizing, he said, I baptize you with water, but there's one that's following after me. He will baptize you with the Holy Ghost and with fire, the Holy Spirit and with fire. So what we have is, he's going to baptize you with Holy Spirit and fire. Now, some men have taken this concept, Holy Spirit and fire, to be two baptisms. And that there's varying degrees of fire. That's how, that's how far people can go with statements like this. That, that there's a, 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 a yellow fire, and then there's a white fire, and then there's a cobalt fire. And, and these are various degrees of sanctification. That's not what he's talking about. This is an idiom. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and with fire. And when he uses that term, with the Holy Spirit and with fire, 
in the Greek, which we see in English, it's telling us this is an idiom. And how do you handle an idiom? You take the second word and turn it into an adverb, fiery, and take that second word and bring it over and put it in front of the first word. So what we have is a fiery Holy Spirit. A purge, a purging, fiery Holy Spirit. It will sanctify you. It will cleanse you. It, 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 it'll make you what you ought to be. Let me give you another idiom. Jesus told the woman at the well in Samaria that they that worship God must worship him in what? Spirit and in truth. Now, some people think you can worship God in spirit and not in truth, that you can worship God in truth and not in spirit. No, that, that, there's no way to misconstrue these words like that. This is an idiom. And how do you handle idioms? You take the second word and make it an adverb, that which is truly, and put it in front of the first word. What he's saying is you have to worship God in that which is truly spirit. And how do we know that's the case? Because Jesus was talking about the spiritual water, the water that if a person would drink thereof, they should never die. He said it again there at the Feast of the Tabernacles. He that believes on me, as the scripture has said, out of his belly shall flow rivers of living water. This he spoke concerning the Holy Spirit, which was not yet given, for Jesus was not yet glorified. He likened, you must be born of what? Of the water and of the spirit and the water. There's another idiom. You must be born of the water, of the spirit rather. No, I'm sorry of the water and the spirit. Now some people take that to mean water baptism, but that's not what Jesus is talking about. What we do is we take the second word, turn it into an adverb, spiritual, and put it in front of the first word, water. You must be born of the spiritual water. He was speaking of the Holy Spirit. And this idiom here, my Lord and my God, how do we handle this idiom? We take the word my godly, turn it into an adverb, put it in front of the first one, my godly Lord, or my heavenly Lord. Now how do we know that, that Thomas was not calling Jesus God? Because Paul told us, to us, it's talking about to the believers. Thomas was a believer upon seeing the Lord Jesus. To us there is but one God, the Father. Not one God, the, the Holy Ghost. Not one God, the, the Son. Three, God in three persons. No, one God, the Father. My Lord and my God is saying, my godly Lord. Not that I have another God beside the God up in heaven. Jesus told us that there is but one true God and he called his Father. He said, you Father, the only true God and Jesus Christ whom you have sent. That's life eternal. We, we see, Peter talked about, blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. Well, if the Father's God and the Son is God, we have two gods. Oh, but you say that no, it's the one God represented in three manifestations. That's not what Peter said. He said, blessed is the, be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. We have but one God. But concerning Lord, you know how that in the Old Testament, in many places, where it says uh, the uh, Lord, it has an all capitals Lord. And many people confuse the all capitals Lord with the Lord that has a capital L and the small letters. They don't understand because somebody hasn't told them. They, they don't understand the difference between the all capitals Lord and the Lord with the small letters. And they think because then it says that Jesus is Lord, that he's the Lord God of the Old Testament, the Lord God of Abraham. That, that's pure deception. That's, that's ignorance of what, of what the scripture is saying.
the all capitals. Lord is referring to the word Yahweh, the name of God there that given to Moses on the Mount, of, on the Mount when he received the, the tablets of the law. You're talking about Yahweh, the eternal one. And the, the small Lord is referring to anyone that is a ruler. Sometimes God is referred to as a ruler, the uh, Lord of heaven and earth, that type of thing, the ruler over, over us. But Peter told us on the day of Pentecost that the same Jesus whom those people had crucified, God made Lord, Lord and Christ. God made him Lord. He didn't make him the eternal one. And Thomas is not calling Jesus the eternal one. And Thomas is not calling Jesus my God. He's saying my godly Lord, my heavenly Lord. The one sent, because Thomas believed the words of the Lord Jesus. Right, right there in, in the same, in the same, a few, in just two verses later, three verses later. John says, and many other signs truly did Jesus in the presence of his disciples, which are not written in this book. But these are written that you might believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God. He didn't say he didn't say that you might believe that Jesus was God to Thomas or that Jesus was God to us. God forbid. But what John is telling us is I wrote these things for the intent. I focused in on these things. I could have said a lot of things, but I focused in on these things so that you might believe Jesus is, is the Christ, the Son of God. Understand what is being said here and understand the dishonesty, the dishonesty of trying to make a Jewish man named Thomas to proclaim Jesus as being God. It would have never entered Thomas's mind that um, any man, including his, his good friend and his, 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 the Messiah, Thomas believed that Jesus was the Messiah. And upon seeing him resurrected, rejoiced in that. He would not have proclaimed his Messiah as being his God, but rather the one sent by God to redeem the world. We have to understand a few basic concepts. One, that there is, there is but one God. Two, that that God is the only creator. And three, that Jesus Christ was sent by God. Those that are, would deceive us tell us that God didn't send his son. He came himself. That Jesus was not a man. He was the, he was the spirit being, the second person of the Trinity, co-equal in the Godhead. These things are not scriptural. But they can use scriptures like these to twist the doctrine of the apostles. Jesus said, I pray not for these, meaning the apostles, for these alone but for all them that believe on me through their word. And their word is Jesus of Nazareth, Nazareth, a man approved of God by miracles, signs, and wonders, which God did by him. Peter preached, he said, how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and with power, who went about doing good, healing the, all that were oppressed of the devil, for God was with him. Jesus said, I am not alone, but he that sent me is with me. Jesus was not his own God. Jesus was not the God of the apostles. Jesus is not our God. And I'm not going to use this verse out of its context and, out of its, and against its meaning to come up with some philosophy of how that a man was actually God. No. What Thomas is saying is that we should believe that Jesus was, is the Lord that God made because of what Jesus did in dying on the cross, being buried and being raised from the dead. God hath highly exalted his son Jesus. Listen to what Peter said. Peter said that there in Acts, the chap third chapter is recorded. He says, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob has glorified his son Jesus. Does that sound like that Peter is calling Jesus my God? No. These men had a perfect understanding. And these words were not written to confuse us 
We just need to look at them correctly and with an understanding of what John's intent was. He says, I have written these things that you might believe Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God. So don't let this verse trouble you. No, no, no. Get it lined up correctly and everything will fall in place. God bless you in Jesus' name.